join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Hello everyone, welcome to Forum IAS. I am Lakshmi Sarjanya. In this video, we are going to have an analysis of the Hindu of today that is 8th of October 2023. So these are the articles that we are going to discuss today. So we are going to start with half plastics affect our daily life. So this comes under our GS3 and also NAF, a more efficacious and inexpensive malaria vaccine. This also comes under our GS3 for mains and all these are important for prelims. So our first editorial is how plastics affect our daily life. So first of all, let's have a look at how this age of plastics has started. So this has actually started in the year 1907 and a Belgian scientist, Leo Bakeland. So he synthesized the first plastic using formaldehyde and phenol. So you have to remember these things that is formaldehyde and also phenol. So using these plastic was first synthesized and it was back then called as Bakelite. So these are the terms that we have to remember. So we have to remember Bakelite and this Belgian scientist and this person has synthesized the first plastic. So what are the materials that were used? It is formaldehyde and phenol were used. So using these Bakelite was produced. So it was mass produced and also marketed. So this is half the dawn of plastics age has started. So as we know, we are using plastic in different forms today for preserving food and also as carry bags, for straws, for cutlery, for bags, for all our cell phones, aircrafts, water bottles, etc. For all these things, we have been using this thing called as plastic. Even in Chandrayaan also, there were materials that were made for with a combination of metals, glass and also plastic. So we are using plastic in a various forms and all. So our United Nations Environment Program, it has pointed out that every day the equivalent of 2000 garbage trucks of plastic. So these are dumped into the world's oceans. So worldwide, this is the quantity that we have to remember according to the statistics of UNEP that is our United Nations Environment Program. Every single day into our world's oceans, there is an in, uh, intake of 2000 garbage trucks full of plastic so this is dumped into our oceans and our rivers and lakes and plastic pollution as we know it's a global problem so this is not a problem of just any one single country so it is a problem of the entire world it is a global problem right and also we can see every day how much quantity of plastic is being dumped into our water bodies like lakes rivers and oceans and also if you look at the year by statistics 19 to 23 million tons of plastic waste it is being leaked into our lakes rivers our aquatic ecosystems right so what will happen because of this plastic so there will be a lot of pollution that happens and what can this pollution do it will also change the habitats and also the natural processes that we have so all these would be changed because of this plastic pollution and also it will reduce our ecosystem's ability to adapt to climate change. So whatever climate change is being brought about, we have some ability, our particular clim uh, climate, our ecosystems, they have some adaptability. So this adaptability of our ecosystems, this ability is also being reduced by plastic pollution. So this is definitely affecting millions of people, their livelihoods, and also food production capabilities and the overall social well-being. So these are the various effects of plastic pollution that we have. And we have one concept known as recycling of plastics. So what is this concept? It is a method for production of the vital resource of liquid and gaseous fuels. So this is what is our recycling of plastics. So thermal and catalytic degradation and gasification these are some alternative methods for re recycling of plastic waste. So this will be used to produce fuel and this fuel, it will have properties similar to commercial fuels. So all these can be done in order to overcome this 
shortage of commercial fuel and also we can deal with the problem of plastic waste so definitely we have a shortage of fuel so fuel is very much needed for various things and we have various uses of fuel so when we have a shortage of commercial fuel what we can do is one thing one one way in which we can produce it is through this plastic recycling so this fuels can be used so that we can overcome this shortage of commercial fuels on one hand and on the other hand one more advantage that we have is we're going to deal with this problem of plastic waste and also we have some alternative methods like thermal and catalytic degradation and gasification so these are the alternative methods for recycling of plastic waste so that this is used to produce fuel having properties which are similar to commercial fuels so in this way we can produce commercial fuels and also we can reduce this plastic waste so this is how plastics affect our daily life so there is a lot of effect on our daily life because of this plastic so and this is how we can deal with it so our next editorial is now a more efficacious inexpensive malaria vaccine so let's have a look at this particular editorial that we have this article so malaria we have to definitely know about this malaria its vaccine etc we can definitely expect questions on this so a malaria vaccine r21 matrix m so this was developed by the university of oxford and this is manufactured by the serum institute of india so this is based in pune so in pune we have this serum institute of india so this has developed this vaccine that is r21 matrix m so you can expect a question was recently r21 matrix m was in news so it is related to which of the following so it's a malaria vaccine remember this so they have tested this in a phase 3 trial at five sites so this was tested in four countries so these are mali burkina faso then we have kenya and tanzania so all these in africa so in all these countries they have tested this particular vaccine right and also this has to be uh, this is yet to be pre qualified by the who so this was done on october 2nd and out of these we have three countries that is nigeria ghana and burkina faso so they have already approved the use of vaccine so this is these three countries we have to remember nigeria ghana and burkina faso so they have already approved the vaccine so this was approved for children aged less than 36 months so this is one point that we have to know so these three countries have approved the use of vaccine that is to immunize children aged less than 36 months and also if you look at the statistics of our world health organization that is who so it in 2021 there were almost like 247 million malaria cases worldwide so in the entire world we have 247 million malaria cases worldwide and 6 lakh 19000 deaths because of malaria so here we can see how serious a problem is related to malaria so malaria is definitely a serious problem and we have to deal with this problem of malaria and about 25 million children they are born each year in countries with moderate to high malaria transmission so we have some countries which have moderate transmission of malaria and we have some countries which have high transmission of malaria and in these countries every year almost 25 million children are born so this is a serious problem and we have to definitely deal with this so that we can deal with the menace of this malaria and this is what is the number of cases that we have every year and also the death toll every year so this is a very high and the efficacy of this r21 matrix m it is much higher than the first malaria vaccine so the first malaria vaccine is this rts so this has been recommended by who in 2021 and this has a vaccine efficacy of 56% at the end of one year in children aged 5 to 17 months so this is the age within this age group it has shown a efficacy of 56% at the end of one year and this vaccine it may help reduce malaria transmission especially when combined with other strategies like mosquito nets right so we are using this vaccine we are going to use this vaccine to stop this or to reduce this transmission of the disease called as malaria and along with this we are going to combine with other strategies like using of mosquito nets right so this efficacy is also important 
so this is about malaria so this is the more efficacious and inexpensive malaria vaccine that we have and these are the th three countries which have approved this particular vaccine and in children aged 5 to 17 months who are more likely to die due to severe malaria the vaccine efficacy it was higher that is it is almost 79 percent where malaria is seasonal and 75 percent where malaria is perennial so seasonal means only in a particular season there should there would be a transmission of malaria and perennial means throughout the year there would be a transmission of this disease known as malaria so in these areas there is a slight difference of the efficacy so here it is 79 percent and if it is perennial that means if it persists around the year then the efficacy is 75 percent so in 2021 as we have seen there were 247 million malaria cases so this is what is we have to remember so the vaccine efficacy at the end of the year for children aged 5 to 36 months it was 75 percent where it is seasonal and 68 percent where it is perennial so coming to our next article it is on israel issue so israel at war as hamas attack leaves 200 people dead so this is what is our next article so this is important from prelims point of view so this israel palestine issue you can definitely expect a question on this so here we'll also look at the map of this israel and palestine so whenever such countries or various places are in news we have to know about the geographical location of these countries right so this is about israel here we have the west bank here we have jordan this is egypt and this is Lebanon and we have Syrian Arab Republic right so these are the places that we have to remember and here we have Jerusalem and this is our Gaza Strip right so remember the geographical location of this we have Golan Heights over here so as far as Israel Palestine issue is concerned we have to know the history of this the political situation over there and also the geographical location so right now why is it a news israel said the iran-backed group it has declared a war as its army has confirmed fighting with militants in several israeli towns and military bases near gaza so where is this gaza here and here we have the mediterranean sea so several times there were questions regarding the location of a particular place whether it is on the coast of which particular sea or ocean so there were also questions on this kind so we have to be careful regarding the map pointing so the gaza strip it is on the mediterranean sea coast so this is where is our gaza so it is in news and prime minister their prime minister he has owed to retaliate this and this is the day of the greatest battle to end the last occupation on the earth so this was said by hamas military commander announcing the start of the operation in a broadcast on Hamas media and they have called on all the Palestinians everywhere to fight. So this particular attack, it marked an unprecedented infiltration into Israel by an unknown number of Hamas gunmen. So they were crossing from this Gaza Strip. So through this Gaza Strip, they were crossing. Okay. And the heaviest blow for Israel in the conflict with Palestinians since the suicide bombings of the second intifada so it has some two decades ago so we have this israel palestine issue this is very important you have to also know about this gaza strip and also the geographical location of gaza strip is also important and also the neighboring countries like we have lebanon we have jordan egypt and also the mediterranean sea so coming to our next article gst council affirms 28% tax on online betting from October 1st. So, on online betting from October 1st, GST Council, is it has affirmed that there would be a tax of 28%. So, we'll look at this particular thing about the decision of the GST Council. So, the goods and services tax, GST Council, it has lowered or reduced the tax rates on certain millet-based products. It has tweaked the age-related norms for members of GST appellate tribunals and also it has ceded the taxation rights on extra neutral alcohol to the states while clearing several long hanging issues. So these were the various decisions that were take, uh, 
announced by the GST council recently so it has reduced the tax rates on certain millet based products and also regarding the GST appellate tribunal it has reduced the age related norms and it has also ceded this taxation rates on this extra neutral alcohol so whatever extra neutral alcohol we have on that the taxation rights were given to the states so these were some key decisions that were taken and the council also signaled that there would be no backpedaling on 28% levy to be imposed on bets made in online gaming so on online gaming for casinos and also for horse racing whatever bets are made betting is made so on that 28% tax would be imposed and there is no going back on this particular decision and this would be from effective from october 1st despite 13 states not having passed the enabling laws yet so out of all the states we have 13 states they have till now they have not passed this enabling laws but despite the states not passing this this would come into uh, the council said that they will not go back on this particular decision so there would be definitely an imposition of 28% tax on betting on online gaming casinos and horse racing and tax demands worth an estimated 1.5 lakh crore served on e gaming firms for the prior period so they were also discussed but it was asserted that the amended gst law it is not retrospective in nature retrospective means it would be effective from a back date so these are the various decisions announced by the gst council so on extra neutral alcohol as we have discussed production kept outside of gst and also we have seen that they have ceded the taxation rights on extra neutral alcohol to the states and states are empowered to tax ena that is extra neutral alcohol and blended flour with at least 70% of millets so they are made tax free when sold loose so while using the millets if they are preparing some blended flour within that we have at least 70% millets then if it is sold loose then it would be tax free levy on molasses slash from 28% to 5% to lower cattle feed costs and also to help sugar cane farmers so it, it used to be 28% it was brought down to 5% so on molasses the tax was brought down from 28% to 5% so what is the advantage of this because of this it will reduce the cost of cattle field and also it will help our sugar cane farmers so these are the various major decisions taken during the gst council meeting so our last article for the day is ganga ghagra basin canals they pose a threat to dolphins so on gangetic dolphin also previously we had some questions so you have to know about this ganga ghagra basin canals so how they are being uh, posing a threat to the dolphins so there was recently a publication that is rescuing ganges river dolphins so this is a scientific name that is platanista gangetica so re rescuing these dolphins from irrigation canals in uttar pradesh north india 2013 to 2020 so this is what is a recent publication that we have so what does this report say it not only highlights the capture and relocation methods but also describes the behavioral and demographic details of this rescued animals so there are some dolphins in this irrigation canals in uttar pradesh so according to this report it has given some suggestions on how to capture them how to relocate them what are the various methods used for this relocation and also along with that it has also described the behavioral and demographic details of these rescued animals and also locations of canals so where are these canals uh, where these animals were trapped so the locations of these canals were also given in this particular publication so 24 rescue operations have been conducted from 2013 to 2020 but five dolphins have also died during these operations and the ganges river dolphin regarding this we have to remember that it's in schedule 1 of indian wildlife protection act 1972 and it's under appendix 1 of convention on international trade in endangered species that is cites and also it comes under appendix 1 of convention on migratory species cms so this status is important try to remember this and the species it is also considered the national aquatic animal and it is uh, listed as 
endangered on the IUCN red list. So the IUCN status of these important species, especially those which are in use in the recent times, this is important for us from prelims point of view. You can definitely expect questions on the IUCN status. So this particular species, they were stuck in these canals and those which are stuck, they are being rescued and they are being relocated. So these are the things that we have to remember. So this is basically a big issue. So they have rescued some animals but some animals have also died so considering that these dolphins they are found in this ganga brahmaputra meghna delta so there is a huge problem to monitor this huge area and also the canal system but they're trying for this relocation and also the capture and relocation methods half these has to be done right so the ganga ghagra basin canals they are uh, posing a threat to this dolphins but they are trying to rescue these dolphins so let's have a look at some previous year questions on the topics that we have discussed today. So we have discussed a topic on malaria vaccine. So as far as this malaria vaccine is concerned, we had a question earlier. So widespread resistance to malarial parasites. So widespread resistance to malarial parasites, to drugs like chloroquine, it has prompted attempts to develop a malarial vaccine to combat malaria. Why is it difficult to develop an effective malaria vaccine? So this was asked in 2010. So here the correct answer is B that is man does not develop immunity to malaria during natural infection. So this is the answer for this. So this is why it is difficult to develop effective malaria vaccine because human beings they do not develop immunity to malaria during natural infection. So our next previous year question is which one of the following countries of Southwest Asia does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea? So this was asked in 2015. So previously also we have seen one article on Israel-Palestine issue. So there we have seen the map of Israel-Palestine and also I have told you that in terms of map pointing, whenever such countries or places are in news, it would be important for us as far as map pointing is concerned. So here you can see regarding the areas which are open out to the Mediterranean Sea. So here the correct answer is B, Jordan. So it does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea as we can see over here. See, Jordan does not open. Here it is. Jordan is over here. So it does not open to the Mediterranean Sea. But we have other countries which are opening out to Mediterranean Sea. Like we have Syria, Lebanon and also Israel. So our next question is, which one of the following is a national aquatic animal of India? So this was also previously asked. So here the correct answer is Gangetic Dolphin. So we have also discussed an article on Gangetic Dolphin where we have a threat to this dolphins from the Gang uh, Ganga Ghagra Basin Canals. So these are the various previous year questions that we have and these are the articles of the day. So hope you have liked this video. Please do follow us on va our various social media channels. And if you like this video, please do like, share and subscribe to Forum IAS. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye-bye.